probably the best well-known object in the Arthurian legend is the Holy Grail. And it's an amazing object because although everyone knows vaguely what it is, there's actually, within the tradition itself, no clear idea. Sometimes it's called a stone, sometimes it's called a platter, sometimes it's called a chalice. Later tradition associates it with the cup of the Last Supper, the cup from which uh, Christ drank at the Last Supper, but also very often the cup which contained his blood on the cross. So it's a double link to Christianity. Lancelot then revealed to Arthur that he had a love, but one that he was ashamed of, for she was another man's wife. He told Arthur that during his time away, he had stayed with Elaine, the daughter of King Peles at Corbenic. She had borne him a son, Galahad. Lancelot had been attracted to Elaine because she had reminded him of his true love, Arthur's wife, Guinevere. Arthur could not bear to hear this, but Lancelot begged Arthur to hear him out. At Corbenic, I was in misery, for in my heart I was with Guinevere. One day I awoke and felt sick with the lies and dishonor and ran away. As Lancelot finished his story, they were urgently summoned to the river where a large barge was coming in towards the bank. On it lay the body of a dead woman. It is her. It is Elaine, said Lancelot. Lancelot is, is a very human uh, figure. Um, he, he's not the perfect knight. Um, if, if you think of all the knights of the round table, there's only one out of all of them who is actually pure at heart. And that, of course, is Galahad. And Lancelot, who, who is the knight that everybody wants to be, is not actually pure of heart at all. And, and, and uh, he doesn't just pursue an adulterous love, but he pursues that love you know, with the, the, the queen, um, who, who he should really um, owe some sort of, uh, of allegiance to, above and beyond his own base desires. Galahad, the son of Sir Lancelot and the scorned Elaine, was to prove himself more than worthy of his place at the round table. Only he is able to fulfill the quest for the Holy Grail. The greatest adventure attempted by Arthur's knights was to see the chalice with the blood of Christ. This was the ultimate prize. Many knights were killed in their adventures and others returned empty-handed. Lancelot found the grail but was denied sight of it because of his adultery, whereas Galahad, who was able to fulfill the quest, becomes the greatest and most honorable knight that ever lived. The grail can only be possessed by the purest knight. And indeed, it is only Galahad, in the end, who can, see, who can see it. With Lancelot now back in Camelot, Arthur's knights now set out to find the Holy Grail. But many knights were killed in their adventures, and others returned empty-handed. One day, as the court gathered, an old man entered the hall with a young companion. The young man was led to the round table by his partner, who then lifted the golden cloth that covered the Siege Perilous, the place reserved at the table on pain of death for the perfect knight. Beneath the cloth, it now read, This is the seat of Galahad, the perfect knight. Galahad, the son of Lancelot and Elaine, had come to take his place at Camelot. That evening, Arthur knighted Galahad, and a strange and dazzling vision appeared, a glimpse of the holy grail of legend. The Arthurian story grows remarkably and rapidly. Uh, for example, Lancelot is the character who brings in the ethos of courtesy. Gawain, that sort of lusty warrior from Celtic, is demoted, and Lancelot is suddenly the greatest knight. Uh, but then there's another greater knight, because when the Grail story comes into the tradition, Sir Galahad becomes the Grail achiever. Many knights tried and failed to find the Holy Grail. Eventually, it was the fate of Galahad to fulfill the quest. After travelling for many months, 
Galahad and his companions, Sir Percival and Sir Bors, arrived at Corbenic, the castle of King Peles, the Fisher King. Inside the castle, the three men found King Peles. To Galahad he said, I am your grandfather. Elaine, your mother, was my daughter. He took from behind his couch a sword that was broken in three pieces. It was only when Sir Galahad held all three pieces that the sword became whole again. It was a sign. A brilliant beam of light shone in the room, casting light on a strange event. The Grail Procession. Three maidens walked through the hall, and each bore a precious object before her. A cup of silver, a candlestick with seven burning candles, and a spear covered with blood. The three companions saw marvels beyond compare. The Holy Grail was handed to Galahad, and Jesus Christ appeared. Sir Bors was the only one of the three knights who returned to Camelot to tell Arthur and his knights of the round table what had occurred. For at Corbenic, Sir Percival found his true love and remained with her, and Galahad, having seen the Grail, died shortly after. For he, the perfect and blameless knight, the Grail Knight, chose to forego life so that he could remain pure after his vision of the Grail and Christ.